We're going to start in three, two, one, go. Welcome, everybody, to Geek Vice episode 273, proving any vice with enough geek can become a virtue. My name's Morph. That man's Kip. Good evening, Kip. Good evening. Kip, how are you doing? It's been a week or it two. It has been a week. Yeah. I'm doing pretty well. This is my second week not going into the office. What? Oh, so, yeah. Oh. It feels pretty good. So already, already on your uh, holiday week, huh? You know it. That's nice. That is nice. So you're, you're going last. And even to make things better. Yeah. I was looking on Facebook, and there's this thing that just came across. It says Marvel and Subaraya Productions are teaming up to tell an all new Ultraman stories in 2020. What? Yeah, so my le my happy levelness just our level of happiness. Woo! Two weeks off of vacation. This is what happens to you. <laughs> just went way up. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh yeah. Well, and you know if Marvel's doing something, then it's gonna be good. So yeah. And maybe it's on Disney Plus. Ooh, there you go. Ooh, well, are which we talking crazy talk? <laughs> which which would you rather do? Would you rather see a series on Disney Plus or a uh, or a movie? Uh, I'd rather see a series. Okay. To be honest, but uh, I know it'd be expensive. Sure, but, right. But, you know, they had that anime one on Netflix last year. Yeah. 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 Or earlier this year, I can't remember which. It was pretty good. I liked it. But I'd like yeah. to see a live action one, so it'd take me back to my youth. Yeah. Sure would be awesome. It would be pretty cool to see what they could do. I mean, Marvel's got the chops to do it, so. Absolutely. Awesome. And Disney's yeah, got so the money. That There's that. I wasn't yeah. even planning on talking about it. And there it is. <laughs> see what you come up with just by uh, surfing the, the Facebook feeds. Surfing um, the webs. Yeah. All right, well, so you were gone last week because you were in Vegas. Any, yes. uh, it, and we know that the rules are what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Do you got That's any what stories? They say. You, yeah, do you got any stories you can tell us about Vegas? You know what? Vegas was good. Um, it's, it's a conference for people who use Autodesk products. It's called Autodesk University. And last year... There was hardly any classes or anything that I wanted to really take. So I ended up just drinking way too much and sleeping through some classes and stuff like that. This year, the classes were more interesting, and I was way more engaged and learned a few things and uh, pretty happy about that. I, uh, I didn't party as hard. I don't have, like, great stories about you know, drunken shenanigans and things like that. Because <laughs> I got a little tipsy one night, but that was about it. it I don't know if it's because I'm becoming old or it just wasn't invited to the right parties or combination of the two. I wasn't invited to the parties because I'm old. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, that's always the thing. Yeah, there was... Um. We did take a trip downtown, and, well, this is a second-hand story. I wasn't there. Again, I was not going downtown. It's a piece of crap, as far as I'm concerned. But the rest of my group did go downtown, and what they tell me is there was a lady doing, like, this hula hoop routine, and she had, like, a walking boot on one leg and then a barefoot <laughs> foot on the other side, and her foot was, like, completely black. It was so dirty. Oh, man. So he tried, one of the guys tried to pay a homeless man $100 to lick her feet. 
So <laughs> I was glad I missed all that. Yeah. No Talk about dehumanizing right there. That's it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. No. no it was I, it, it was good. The the best thing about Vegas, honestly, if you're not going to take part in a lot of stuff, is the people watching. Yeah. Yeah, the best thing to do is just get into a bar or something where you have a view of the of the walkways where a lot of you can see a lot of traffic and just sit there and drink and watch the people go by. Because you'll see everything. You'll see wedding parties. You'll see large groups of tourists have following a guy holding a flag so they knew which guy to follow around. <laughs> um, you'll see prostitutes. You'll see... Uh, people picking up on prostitutes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you see it all. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll, uh... I didn't see any Elvis. I didn't see any Elvi though. Oh, that's a little disappointed a shame. in that. Yeah, you would think that would be something you always see in Vegas, but yeah, you think it'd be the default setting, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, what a shame. Yeah. So this happened to me though, and. I'm still wondering why, but so they have these keynote speak speakers every day, like at 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's like, got the fog machine going, laser lights and a DJ while you're getting seated. And then we went to the first one and afterwards we're kind of sitting around talking about it. And, you know, we were talking about everything and the DJ is this Japanese lady called Miss Joy or something like that. I think it's Miss Joy or Lady Joy. I can't remember which. And apparently I give off this vibe that says I like Japanese women because the one of the guys we was with is like, yeah, I didn't think she was that cute, but you probably thought she was talking to me. It's like, what would I do? <laughs> <laughs> what, what about me gives us this vibe? So... Apparently, I learned something about myself. They, yeah, I mean, well, if you go if you go to Vegas and you don't come back learning at least one thing about yourself, then it, is it really a successful trip to Vegas? I guess not. So, okay, this this is actually kind of cool. So, um, I got on the elevator on the the last night there, going up to my room, calling in a night. And a guy gets on the elevator and he's like, is the big party over? And I'm like, no, nah, it's still going on. It's just boring. I left. And then we looked up at each other and went, holy shit. It was somebody I worked with over 20 years ago at another engineering firm. Oh, man. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. And then the next day at the airport, we're standing in line because it's Southwest. And the guy walks right up next to me. It's him again. <laughs> So we got to talking, and and uh, so you told me a story about what your coworkers having to wheel somebody into their room because they were passed out drunk. They had a guy who completely missed his flight. Oh. He got on the, he got on the plane, and then there was another guy, and he's like, "Hey, do you know where I'm going to say Ryan? I don't remember his name. Do you know where Ryan is?" Is like, no. But if he doesn't hurry, he's going to miss the flight. He missed the flight. <laughs> so when I get back to the office, I'm going to email him and see what happened to this poor guy. Yeah. Um, I'd be mad at my coworkers and friends for letting me miss the flight. But, uh, yeah, well, so, so that begs a question. Like, is it your, is it your fault if a coworker misses a flight or is it their fault or is it both like is it your responsibility like if you go like call if you try calling him and you knock on his door and he didn't answer like can you really do much more than that well you know i'd like to think that my coworkers and friends would at least check to make sure i'm alive yeah yes you know there is and that that would at least prompt me to like get ready to go to the airport but apparently <laughs> no f that guy we're, we're leaving without him. <laughs> so hopefully he's not dead or, you know, or was asleep in a gutter somewhere. 
Yeah. And have shoes and wallets stolen. I don't know. So I, I need to find out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe maybe he just uh, maybe he just picked up and just jumped on the next flight. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the stuff Explain that, that one to your boss. How come you had to buy another airline ticket? Well, <laughs> well see, there was over, a lot of alcohol involved. And... I overslept a little bit. That's yeah. what I would go with. Overslept. Just say, well, I, I learned so much. My brain was so tired. I slept I slept in. I couldn't be helped. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. So other people had a crazy time and missed flights. But first night in bed by 830. Yeah. Proud moment. <laughs> Second night. Um, so the first night was Monday. So I watched like half the Chiefs football game and then went to bed. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Um, second night, I think maybe 10, 1030. Man. And then the big party night was probably around midnight. Yeah. So not a crazy time. So, yay, I went to Vegas. Yeah, all my stories are boring. <laughs> Well, you know, that's not all bad. That's not all bad. You at least you at least got to go. You got the good stuff in that you needed to. You went there for work. You left with good work knowledge. Um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. this next year. The talks are that I'll get to go to this conference next year. So um, I hope so because I'll be there. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, kind of a cool thing. And I've never been. I've been to Vegas, but not for this conference. And I hear lots of good things about it, so I'd like to check it out. So yeah, it uh, it it is really good. The best, honestly, this is this is sad, but it's true. The best part about it for me is all the steps you get in, so you can earn points on your uh, um, wellness app for work. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Adding up those points for that Amazon gift card. There you go. Yeah. Which I already uh -huh. have earmarked. I'm getting Catan star Starfarers. Oh, are so you? We, we can talk about that bad boy when I get it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, since you've been gone, um, you, since you, you've been gone, <laughs> have you have you stayed caught up on the Mandalorian? I am completely updated. I mean, um, it's pretty easy yeah. to do. Uh, what it week, is pretty so. easy to do. Thankfully, they moved. You know, the first one was on a Tuesday, and then they moved yeah. to Fridays. Yep. So I was back. I was back Friday afternoon. Oh, nice! So I was able to watch. Perfect. Are you all up to date? I am. I am up to date. Uh, my Mandalorian update is: I really liked the first episode. The second episode was okay. Third episode was as good as the first episode. Um, I w the second episode was good. It was just slow. I thought it was very artistic in how they did it. Um, um, the fact that I think there was only m maybe five or ten words the entire 30-minute episode I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, it was... I was telling my wife, I said, that episode was really slow. Yes. And I didn't hate it. That's how good of a job they're doing on this TV show. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, but I, the third episode was just amazing. I love, I love what they did there. I love the, I love the turn of the character. Just three episodes in, and your main character is already kind of shifted from where he was in the first episode. I, I thought it was really well done. Um, I'm a big fan of it. It, I so just don't understand how the hell you can tell exactly what the Mandalorian is feeling without seeing his face, and you still can tell. Yeah, yeah. You can I, tell I think he's conflicted, you can tell all this stuff, and it's like, how? I can't see facial expressions, but you can see it. It's like, yeah. holy cow. It's incredible. They've they, He's done a great job, and I... I swear, John Favreau is just amazing. He is just flat out amazing. He's the one that's written this. 
he directed, I think, the first episode, um, but then the, or one of these three, maybe he did the third one. One I of think the three, he did the third one for yeah, sure. Yeah, one of the three he's done. Um, but yeah, these, yeah, there isn't a way to connect to other computers throughout the world and get information. Yeah, well, you know, if I start typing, then I start messing stuff up, so... <laughs> So I'll let you look that up. But yeah, this is it's really good. And the storyline that they're doing is good. I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to see what else happens. And I'm trying not to spoil anything for those of you that haven't watched it. I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. So I'm keeping it very generic. But this is... This, this show is well worth the money that... Disney is charging you for it. Um, yeah, this show alone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just ignore all the other stuff that's coming out on Disney Plus. Just get it for this. The other stuff is all a bonus for, and just buy it for the whole year because, I mean, I don't know how many episodes this is going to end up being, but. Um, I, I'm, Actually, John Favreau didn't direct. Any any of them. Them. One, two, or three. Oh, okay. I know he wrote them, but yeah, he wrote them. Wow, episode is four that we have not seen yet is directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, I do. I do remember somebody telling me that. It's re really good. So, um, after we watched episode three. I bet my wife has rewatched the last scene ten times. Oh, I believe it. At least, yeah. Yeah. Who knows how many times she watched it. Uh, well, take that back. It didn't happen while I was in Vegas. It's like, if I if that would have happened before I went to Vegas, I bet she would have watched that thing a hundred times while I was gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I completely believe that. And But it's such a good, like... I mean, it was such a, such a good episode. Uh, it's, I love it. I love it. I love all of it. Um, and I can't wait for more of it to come out. So Yeah. Well, now we, uh, the wife and I will be doing something, and one of us will go, this is the way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, it's, it, it's good. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really good. good. So on the, on the side note... You've been watching a HBO series because you are one of those privileged people that have HBO. Um, and I want to know more about this. So tell me about The Watchmen on HBO. Okay, so The Watchmen. I'm just going to come out of the gate and just say it. It's phenomenal. It is so good. Um, it takes place in Tulsa in 2019. Uh it's not the 2019 that we're accustomed to because it's the Watchmen. Of course. Um, some a series of events took place in uh, 1989. I think it was 1989. That started whatever's going on. That was the tipping point. And... As the season progresses, you just find out bits and pieces here and there. So I'm not going to give anything away. But I, what I will tell you, it's racially charged. Um, there is some KKK activity. There's a group that's even worse than the KKK called the 7th Cavalry. Okay. They all wear the Rorschach masks. They're bad. Mm-hmm. They're so bad, this is why cops have to wear masks. So in this world, if you're a cop, nobody's supposed to know it. You wear a mask on duty. You pretty much have a cover story. Nobody knows you're a cop because these people are searching you out, killing you and your family. It's not good to be hmm. on the side of the law right now. Um. Regina King plays the main character. I guess you could say she's the main character. Um, oh, what's her superhero name? 
my apologies for not memorizing everything, but uh, so does this. Does this take? I know it takes place Sister long, Knight. long after the the movie and the and the comic book because the movie and the comic book were supposed to be the same. Yeah. So Doctor Manhattan is on Mars. Okay. Um. There but are it's... references to the new Minutemen from the forties. Right. Um. Jeremy Irons plays. I can't remember the character's name, but he was the world's smartest man in the Watchmen movie. Ozymandias. The, the bad guy. Yeah, Ozymandias. Yeah, that's it. Uh, he's him Okay. in exile. He's been basically... It's prison, but it's just really he's just exiled to this island. He can't leave. Gotcha. And he's doing some crazy sh- stuff. Almost cussed. It was close. <laughs> he's doing some crazy stuff you have to see it to believe it I don't okay. want to give any of that away but it's like holy cow this is kind of messed up um, this last episode we watched tonight so we're finally all caught up from whatever happened last Sunday super racially charged to the point of uncomfortable mm. as a privileged white boy that I am it just shines this harsh light and makes you ashamed. It really does. Even though I've never done any of these things, you still, you're like, I wish I could be there to stop this. Right. You know, the lynching, the, the beatings, just, you know, because somebody has got a different color skin, you just want, you want it to stop, you know, and they force you to watch it for an hour. <laughs> My wife's even, I hating this episode. It's like, yeah, but it's important. Right. It's super important because <laughs> Watchmen, as usual, is taking something that's going on right now and exaggerating it to levels where you can actually start to pay attention to it. And it's good for us. It's painful, but it's good for us. So wow. I highly recommend it if you can get your grubby little hands on it. It's worth the watch. I think we just finished episode five. I need to check because this is a good time for me to check. Because I think it's I think it's four or five. What was the first episode? What day was that? I don't know. I guess we just finished episode six. Oh, okay further along than I thought. And it's yeah. probably another it's probably a a ten or twelve episode season, that's my guess. Uh nine. Nine. Okay, so the first episode was October twentieth. That's too bad. And the only reason I say that is the events that happened thirty years ago happened on November second. Mm. So it's called 11-2. Gotcha. And we're watching that, and I'm like, I'm tired and all this other stuff. We, it wasn't tonight we watched it. It was the other night. And it's like, wouldn't it be awesome if the first episode of The Watchmen was 11-2? But it wasn't. But right. pretty close. There was an episode <laughs> on 11-3. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's smart. It's poignant. Um, there's one character... Um, his mask avenger, whatever you want to call him, is called Looking Glass. I love this guy. I love the way he talks. I love the moral compass that he lives by. Uh, you get some backstory on him in like episode five. Um, some shit goes down. There I cussed. Some stuff <laughs> goes down in episode five that you're like, oh crap, where's this gonna go? So, it's just the way the show is. You yeah. you think you get a beat on stuff, and then the episode happens, you're like, well, I was wrong. And now I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't want anything to happen to this guy or this person. And you think it's going to go all Game of Thrones on you and kill off all of the characters you like. But so far, you know, 
it hasn't totally been that, but somebody did die that shocked me. So Okay. All right. We'll see how we'll see how it all pans out. But uh yeah, you gotta get your hands on it. It's so good. All right. I'll have to uh I'll have to see what I can do. I've heard mixed I've heard mixed feelings about it. I have some some people that I know that that were big fans of the comic book and uh, haven't liked this series. And then I have some, some other friends that, um, that like yourself, that, that are big fans of the the series. So, um, yeah. And I don't know if it follows. Well, it can't, it can't follow the comic books because right. The comic books only went as far as the movie. Um, There's, there's nothing else after it. There's been nothing there mainly because Alan Moore has he refuses to do any like any sequels and he has zero to do with this HBO series as well which is why it takes place so far in the future and not you know directly after or anything like that so they've kind of separated it out most of those characters aren't there or don't have a major role so that you know they they have that leeway uh, so yeah, so far it, from the first one, there's mentions of Manhattan. There's mentions of the comedian, right? But um, the guy we just talked about already forgot Ozzie his Manus. name. The smartest guy, he's in it, and Silk Spectre is in it. Okay, cool. Um, oh. Silk Spectre is not Silk Spectre though, right? She well, was Silk Spectre, so we'll just put it that way. So yeah. there are some okay. huge tie-ins to the movie, but like you said, there's enough time that has passed that they can kind of do what they want, and you can tell they're going to. Cool, cool. Yeah. Looking yeah, yeah. forward to that. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. I will have to check that out. All right, so. Uh, you know that that's a lot of TV stuff. So yeah, that's where we're gonna put that. Now we're going to uh, let's go to the video game side of this because I've been doing a lot of gaming here lately. Uh, we Me had too. a we had a family game night the other night and uh, we were gonna play Gizmos, but then we we're like, you know what? Let's play a game of Flapjacks and Sasquatches first, and then we'll play. Uh, I guess oh, so well, you're talking board games. You said video games kind of threw me off. Oh, yeah, we did. I did say video games, didn't I? Well, <laughs> all right. Well, let's go board games first because that's what I got sitting here next to me, and I'm super stoked to talk about it um, because I've been playing video games too. But board games first. We're playing Flapjacks and Sasquatches. We're playing the company Yay! store. We're playing the new expansion and all the new stuff that's involved. I love what they've done with the company store and putting a nice, uh, um, it's, it, I thought it would be, I was worried that it was going to be cumbersome and the company store does, it works without taking anything away from the original game. You can, you can play without the company store with just the new cards for the Jack deck and new tree cards and it works just fine. Uh, but, and the cool thing is that some of the stuff that's in the company store is actually in the Jack deck. So one of the things that they added that I thought was really cool is if you can't draw an axe, you can buy an axe. And not just any oh, axe. Yeah. You can get a smart axe. Uh, the, the smart axe allows, uh, if you chop down a tree, any extra chops you have can go to your next tree. You get to draw a tree right away and put those chops on it. So you have no wasted chops. Um, it's, it is a lot of fun. There are lots of cool cards in here that you get. Um, you can even just get normal axes and, and this is a felling axe. It's, it's available in the company store, so you can just buy, you can buy things that you need. Now, the uh, some of the some of the challenge with the company store is getting the cards to come out that you need to come out, because um, you know um, it's kind of hard. Like sometimes you're just like, oh, there's not enough there, but 
Then there's cards, and I'm looking for it here. I'm looking for the card that I think is the the most hated and loved card in the company store. Uh, it is called Subcontract. It okay. costs it costs four wooden nickels to get this <laughs> card. Uh, you give a player one wooden nickel. They must roll half their dice on your tree, rounded down. That doesn't go away. You can't you, get rid of that at all. N n not it, it. Doesn't. No, I have not come across a card yet that makes that go away. Interesting. So you can put a subcontract on somebody that maybe has like I don't know a long saw partner or chainsaw or something that just they roll a, a bunch of dice and half their dice go to you. It is awesome. And it's interesting uh, because then you don't ever want them to break or you ever want anybody to steal right. their equipment. Right. But what's nice is, well, I mean, you that means you can also chop down your trees without ever having an axe. So yeah. I actually won a game because of this because of this subcontract card. I needed one more tree chopped down. I didn't have an axe, and the person that I put the subcontract on chopped down my tree for me, and I won the game. <laughs> I love that. That is so priceless. Like it is so much fun. So um, I definitely recommend if you got the company store. Throw it out there and play. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't get in the way at all. It is a lot of fun. Um, the uh, the other thing that it adds uh, there are if you aren't using them, I think it's a lot of fun too. Is the universal cards that came in the cup of Joe? There's some expansion cards for it that came from. Uh, from the company store, uh, like this, this one is quite fun. It's called "We Can Pay Them," and it uh, it allows you to spend one wooden nickel to lure a help card from somebody. <laughs> So yeah, there there are lots of um, there's lots of fun things. Uh, they're they're just they're great cards that just add some stuff to everything, and they just change the universal cards. Just change the rules of the game, and they're a lot of fun. Um, they they are frustrating sometimes when they come up, uh, but. They like there's cards. I'm trying to find one right now that has that uh, basically stops you from taking like using a lure help card. It there is stuff out there that um, that just changes everything. Like, uh, there's cards that'll bring the beavers back out of the discard pile. There are... Oh, here, this was, this is the one I was looking for. Chad Eager, Eager, Eber, Eeg, Bert, Sasquatch Hunter. No Sasquatch cards can be played. That goes until somebody chops down a tree. Oh, really? So, it's, it's really fun. It, it's... It, uh, you know, it, it just adds, it adds that dynamic to the game where it just changes. It makes cards that you had in your hands, you're waiting to use, and then you get to go use them and you're like, oh crap, that universal card came out, you know, like, uh, dress code, lure help cards cannot be played while dress code is in play. No more lure helps. Or, uh, or you have a, a, you have babe biscuits. You just drew babe biscuits, but there's no babes out on the. That, that sounds funny. There's no babes out on the table, but there's a an apprentice or a long son partner. Well, 
you get a car, a universal card called Dang, those are good. Now Babe Biscuits can be used to lure Apprentice, Babe, or Long Saw and, saw and Partner. <laughs> well, see, I'm going to have to break this expansion out because I just introduced my gaming group to Flapjacks and Sasquatches. And, of course, they loved it. But of one of the people was completely getting frustrated because every time she got an axe, she either immediately broke it or somebody immediately stole it from her. <laughs> so being able to purchase eventually yeah. may help that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. The trees, so we have house ruled some stuff to um, allow the company store to be a little bit more robust and used a little bit more because we enjoyed it so much. Um, and it doesn't, in the rules, it does not specify if you get wooden nickels for chopping down trees. Uh, there is a universal card that says every tree you chop down, uh, is worth one wooden nickel. And some of the trees that came in the, in the company store expansion pack have, they say, that you get wooden nickels for chopping those down. But like the trees that were that you already had, they don't have anything to them. So we've house ruled it that chopping down a tree always gives you wooden nickels. Um, we've gone with two wooden nickels, which most of the stuff in the company store is three wooden nickels or more. Um, there's a couple things that are one or two, but most of them are three or four. And so... By having, you know, by having a way to get uh, more wooden nickels, it helps be able to use the company store a little bit more and buy cards out of it, and um, then they don't sit there. Is that the only way to get a wooden nickel? There are, there are two ways to get a wooden nickel. One is by chopping down a tree, or um, there are certain company store cards that when they're flipped over... They say when flipped, gain. Uh, some of them are gaining tree points, and some of them actually say, I think there's some in here. Maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe there's a card. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's not in the company store. Maybe it's in the, the jack deck. Uh, but y you play the card, and it says you gain two wooden nickels when you play that card. So Okay. So there are some ways to get them otherwise, but... It's few and far between. There's very little ways of getting those. And there's, based off of all the trees in the deck, there's very few of those trees that give you wood nickels. And so it um, it makes it a little bit harder to come across them. Like, here's, a, here's one tree example that is seven chops for a five-point tree, but it gives you three wood nickels. Um... The, some of the new trees that they've added in too are a lot of fun. Um, oh, here's here's another tree that gets you some. It's a black walnut tree. Gain one wooden nickel each round. You get at least one chop on this tree, but it only takes four chops to chop it down. So you can uh, get four wooden nickels off the thing. Yeah, if if, if you only got one chop only get, per round, right? Um. Let's see where are some other some of the <laughs> the company store has some very massive trees. This is an ebony tree, nine chops, ten points, four wood nickels. Um, but then there's I'm trying to find the the one that is the most annoying. Let me see where to go. Come on. Come on. Where is it at? It is. Where's that? There it is. There it is. You can get a bonsai tree. Bonsai tree is one chop, one point. Two wooden nickels. Um, it does say you may give this tree to another player. When it is chopped down, you gain one wooden nickel from that player. Um, the the other one that's quite funny, and this is actually out of the Cup of Joe expansion, but it's a maple sapling. 
two chops, one point. Yeah. <laughs> There's also one called, was it Ironwood or something like that, where it yep. takes a bunch of chops, you get one point. Yep. Or a Petrified Tree as well. Maybe yeah. that's what it is, Petrified Tree. Because well, yeah. Ironwood is, there we go, six chops, eight points. But it takes one less to break uh, your axe. That's what that one, yeah. yeah. And then the Petrified is like a million chops to get a couple of points. Yep. Yep. And I can't find it in here. Oh, it must fill you in the... Well, that's I mean... one thing about this game is there... If you have all the expansions and everything, there's a lot of oh, cards, which I'm grateful for, because it makes the game different every time you play. Yeah, eight chops for three points. Yeah. So awesome. But you can switch it with somebody else's tree and make them suffer. Yes. Yeah. And so we actually... Uh, we, yeah, we we ruled it that you could only swap it once, and uh, otherwise it would start to becoming like the battle of swapping trees. So you don't. Yeah, have well, that's them, what but... we did too. You can only swap it if you drew it. Yeah. Yep. So it's a lot of fun, guys. Go get the expansion if you don't have it. Um, I have, I have introduced this to many people, and I have never had somebody say, "I don't know if I really like that game." Um, I did find out though after when I got the company store and I started rereading um, some of the cards and rereading the rules to make sure that I was playing this right. I realized I had been playing one particular thing wrong for a long time. I don't oh, even yeah, know when that? it started. Um, that it takes three breaks on your dice to break your axe. We were playing there for a while that it was one or two, and it was happening way too frequently. So, um, You know, the first, time, first few times I played it, I did the exact same thing. It is the, there was one guy that he rolled chops... He rolled breaks every time. It's like he couldn't keep an axe. Every time it was his turn, he'd break his axe. It's yeah. like, okay, we need to double check this. And then what he did is like, oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> you yeah. have to roll three in one roll, not not uh, three, one. Yeah, so. three is much better. So, um, yeah, it's, it's – hey, Prolific Games has knocked it out of the park again. Uh, way fun. Enjoy it a lot. So, um, big, big fans of that. So, yeah, um, and it's a hit. I mean, anytime you get a game group together and you say, hey, let's play a round of this, you end up playing more than one round. Oh, yeah. Always. Always. Because it is just that much fun. The, the other thing that came with the expansion pack that I uh, didn't think I would need that much was the plus one or minus one cards for points those come in really handy especially when tent caterpillars get played on all your trees and they're my, they make your trees worth two less points so um yeah yikes a lot of really annoying when you have a you know a you only need a five points to win you got a five point tree you're like yes i got this and then somebody slaps that tent caterpillar on you and now it's only worth three yeah, it's definitely a take that game. Yes. If you have friends who are easily upset by that, do not play this game. We have to, We whenever we sit down to play this with the kids, it, we always look at them and go, okay, nobody can get mad at this game. We are just playing for fun. Do not get angry. Because, man, do they get upset when some of these cards are played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy. It's easy to piss somebody off. Yeah. So, all right. So the other thing that I was talking about that I so quickly swerved because transitions are amazing in this line of work, uh, Witcher 3. I've been playing Witcher 3, and I am. I would say I'm about halfway done with the game. I've got about uh, 50 hours played. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, it's one of those open world games like GTA or, um, Fallout or, um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes. Like those. This game, if you're not familiar with it, takes place, 
This is the third one, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Um, it takes place in a, war, a world with swords and sorceries and dwarves and halflings and um, monsters, and witchers are monster hunters. They are hired to kill monsters, but then they're also... Um, they also have connections to people and, and things like that. And so this game, I, I'd heard good things about it. And the whole series I had heard good things about. And I tried to play Witcher 2, and I couldn't even make it out of the tutorial area because I couldn't get the combat system down. And it frustrated me, and so I just quit playing it altogether. So when... Witcher 3 had come out, I was like, I don't know if I really want to get this. And so I waited a long time. And then it finally went on sale to a point where I could get Witcher 3, the base game, the two expansions, a um, bunch of DLC for it for, for 12 bucks. And I was like, you know what? If I don't like it for 12 bucks, that's at least tolerable. Not paying 60 bucks for it. Um, plus all the expansion costs for the expansions and things like that, which could put you way over sixty bucks in a base game. Um, Twelve bucks. If I didn't like it, I was like, okay, no big deal. So I started playing it. Um, the combat system was all fixed from Witcher Two. It was way easier to manage, to maintain. It uh, it felt more fluid, more functioning. There's magic that you as a witcher can do, and being able to switch between your your um, magic abilities that you want to use is really easy to do, and it doesn't quite pause the game, but it slows it down so much so that you don't feel rushed to be able to pick what you wanted to do and set that up. And then once you have it s selected, then it's just one button that does your the magic that you had selected, and... You know, um, it, it, you can keep going back to it. And it's it works really well. On top of that, the story is amazing. I never got into the story in Witcher 2 because I didn't get out into the open world. This game, it's really quick and easy to get you out into the open game. Even the tutorial part of it, the, the first part is so big that you feel feel like you're not in a tutorial you don't it's not like getting demands of hey we'll do this well hey here's how you do this it's just going out and doing it but they guide you in this way that doesn't feel heavy-handed or you feel like you're actually playing the game and i didn't realize until i got past that point and opened up to an even bigger world with more side quests and things like that to do, that I, was like, that I had, hadn't even started the game yet. Um, so, just really well done, very immersive. You, uh, I catch myself, like, getting into a quest and feeling like I'm, I need to hurry up and keep going. I need to go to the next part of the quest, and I gotta go quick. And, because you feel feel like that sense of drama that fen that sense of that suspense of like if i don't hurry up and do this then this guy over here that you know is is gonna die and um you know that's not there because it's a video game and it's doesn't work that way but <laughs> it, you still feel like that it immerses you in it uh the other thing this game had advertised was that your decisions matter and that if you based off of how you make certain decisions it will affect the gameplay oh i like that it is it, it is true um it's not every decision but you can feel when those moments are coming up you can feel when you're pushed into like you're given a choice of going down path A or going down path B. And you don't feel like there's a right or wrong way, but it is definitely a fork in the story that you're going to play. And it's really interesting because you 
fee like you feel it. And when it, for a video game to be able to draw those kind of emotions and to make you feel that stress of which way should I go, um, or maybe stress isn't the right word, just that thought-provoking idea, I, it's that's incredible. I mean, I think that's a really well-done game. So I am loving nice. Witcher 3. I can't put it away. I can't stop playing it and, you know... I will probably play a, a, at least another hour of it uh, tonight after we record just because it's that good. And I won't get to play when my in-laws are staying in my basement. Right? I'll have to check a, into it because I just finished The Last of Us and I need a game to play. Yes, definitely check it out. It is it is available on uh, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and I believe it's even out for the Switch now, which I thought was really cool. So, even better. So yeah, and it's old. You know, it's it's old enough. The game came out several years ago, so it's uh, it's come down in price. You can you can definitely find it for a deal. I like a deal. So there you go. There's there's our games. There's our TV. There's our games. Um, one last thing before we wrap this up. Um, I had talked about it on a previous episode that uh, that my son, my oldest son, and I are... We read a book before bed every night, or almost every night. And it's... We've been reading, lar- like, longer chapter books. You know, he's, he's 10 years old now, and he could read these books on his own, but... He likes hearing the more complicated and in-depth stories that, that come with these, and sometimes it's hard for him to, um, well, it's not hard for him to. He enjoys me reading them and following along with me and uh, reading these stories that I read when I was younger. And so we've been reading The Legends of Dritz, and we have read through the Icewind Dale trilogy, and we read through... Um, and we actually just finished the Legacy series, which is five books. And this is the story, and I'm sorry, I'm going to spoil it. For those of you that haven't read it, I'm sorry. You're going to deal with it. This book's been out <laughs> forever. Um, in the Legacy series with Dritz, a main character dies in one of the books. His name's Wolfgar, he's a big barbarian, and I have read all these books. I knew that he came back, and because he didn't actually die, he was taken to the abyss by a creature that when it died, it went to the abyss. He killed it, and it, in the midst of it, and this creature took him to the abyss, the, the abyssal plane. And that is where Wolfgar was tormented and tortured for years before one of the demon creatures of the Abyss brought Wolfgar back to torment Dritz uh, by torturing Wolfgar. And I knew what was going to happen, but Reese didn't. And I was very careful with, you know, making sure that I didn't give any of that stuff away. I wanted him to to feel this moment and uh, just, well, it would have been just a couple weeks ago. We hit that point in the story because it is towards the end of this entire series. So it's, it's at the near the end of the fifth book and Wolfgar dies early on in that series. So it was a very impactful moment. And, when Reese, I was reading it, and the moment I read that it was Wolfgar, and that Wolfgar wasn't dead, and that he was joining this fight against this demon, like, Reese looks at me, he's like, wait a second, did that just happen? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes it did. And it was that, it was that moment of, um, I don't know, like, it felt just as good as when I read it the first time, seeing him experience it for the first time. So it was really, I thought it was really cool. 
Um, it was it was something that um, it's kind of like showing your kid, you know, or or showing a friend, a good friend of yours, a movie that has a good twist in it that you know is gonna come, and they get to see it for the first time, and they they're like, oh man, that was awesome. You know, it's that same kind of feeling, and so I. If you haven't read those books, R.A. Salvatore is a genius, and I know people think Dritz is overplayed and he's in there too much, and there's lots of people that don't like him or whatever. The books are amazing, the characters are awesome, and the way Salvatore writes these stories is really good. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading more of this stuff with Reese and more of these stories, um, and but yeah. I thought that was really cool. So. That is cool. Yeah, I've read not the whole series, but probably three books, two, three books. And they're really good. They're, they're yeah. page turners. You, you, and they're thick books. And you think, oh, my God, this is going to be a slog. But it's not. It goes – you burn through them fairly quick for as, as long as they are. Yeah. Yeah, they, they are. And – I have what I have is I've got the collector's editions of them. So like, um, well, it's over there on the shelf. But um, the, uh, I mean, the book I have is is probably about that thick, and it's all five books all in one. <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> it was really funny when I brought it up, and he's like, "We're gonna read that," and I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Is that one book?" No. <laughs> No, this is five books. You're yeah, this okay. is not Stephen King. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice small print and a massive stack. It looks like an encyclopedia. It's so big. So, uh, But really cool. So, um, Yeah, so there we go. We got that going for us. So there you Very go. Nice. You, got, you got TV shows. You got board games. You got video games. You got a little bit of book knowledge. What more could you ask for from an episode of Geek Vice? Exactly. Yeah. We covered next, all matters of geek. Yeah. Next week, I'm hoping to talk about some movies. We're gonna talk about. Uh, we're gonna talk some some older movies that we've uh, both Kip and I have watched, and then I'm hoping to go see a new movie in the theater before next week. Um, we'll see if that happens. So. Stay tuned. We'll morph. Yeah. Make it to the movie theater. Find out next week. With no kids, that's the hope. No kids, go see a movie. So, well, yeah, there's that. Yeah. We're going to a small town in Colorado, so there will be no movie going. Ah, uh, that's right. It is Thanksgiving week, everybody. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, you got anything else you want to throw out there before we wrap this up? No, I'll have plenty to talk about once. Uh, I get my new game and some other things that I've yeah. got brewing that uh, will good. be interesting. But, uh, well, at least I think they're interesting. We'll find out if you think they're interesting. But, yeah, we'll just keep those under the hat for now. Very, very good. So stay tuned, everybody. Oh, well, well you, we should also pimp out there while we're doing this before we start wrapping stuff up. Go check out the Podcast Arcade. We've got some fun stuff in the works for the Podcast Arcade across the entire network. So... Be yeah, sure. we, we have to do more voice work. Yep, yep, it's coming. Um, yeah, I need to do that this weekend. So, um, yeah. Looking forward to that. Hopefully, uh, I'm expecting it to be just as good as the last time. The script looks really good, so excited. It should be better because I only have two lines. <laughs> yeah, you carried a lot of the last one, didn't you? Yeah, and I'm terrible, so... <laughs> This should be a lot better. <laughs> uh, I think this is going to be good. I think this is going to be good. I like it. So, all right, everybody, you know the drill. Go check out our blog at geekvice.blogspot.com. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash geekvice. Follow us on Twitter. You can follow that man over there at Kip Killigan. You can follow me at geekvice. Go check out the YouTube channel. Hit some subscribe button. Like those videos. Make comments. Do whatever. We enjoy it. Uh, we make these things for you. There's going to be more stuff coming. I'm working with Brady on uh, some another series for our YouTube channel uh, for another game. So we're working on that as we speak. 
Going to build that up really good. And, of course, you can always reach us by email at geekvice at, at, blah, 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 at email us at geekvice at gmail.com. I'm not editing that out. That's going to uh, stay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening to our ramblings, and we will see you next time. Later. This podcast is part of the Podcast Arcade Network.